guys, we are up on the mountain on a survival mission. We have no food or water, anything that we're gonna wanna eat. I'm gonna have to either find or forage. We're gonna try and go fishing at a mountain lake as well. I've got the fishing gear. But first, what we gotta do is climb higher on the mountain. The survival mission begins now, uh, now that you guys have joined. We have to be very careful uh, when we're climbing up here because it has gotten hot out and the area is filled with rattlesnakes. So anytime we reach for something, we have to be very careful that we don't grab right into one. That's how accidents often happen. This is absolutely where the rattlesnakes could hang out. A couple of weeks ago, and I told you guys on Instagram, uh, I found a nest uh, up there and you can hear uh, behind me a hawk. I thought it was an eagle at the time, but it's actually a hawk's nest up there. Remember, we never want to disturb uh, beautiful birds like that when they are uh, in the middle of breeding. My lips are already completely dry. Some water sounds really good right now. A breeze up here feels so good. That cool feeling is from our sweat evaporating. So while it feels good, uh, it is drying us out and dehydrating us very fast. So we gotta find a water source ASAP. And while I'm talking to you, that the hawk up there has a, he's got, he's got a snake in his claws and that's probably why the hawk is yelling at us uh, it wants to get down to its young uh, to feed probably a rattlesnake to them man what a cool animal huh <laughs> they're out here catching snakes and eating them my goodness you guys look at this it is like a little oasis right here it's beautifully green you can see there's a bit of a valley and uh it looks like there's several quail flying around down there Look at this, all of this down here uh, was a creek bed, but it's all dried up. I just saw some little animal run here. It might have been a mouse. Maybe it was Gus Gus. Gus Gus, are you up here? If so, we're here for the rescue. Well, I don't have any food or water for you, so sorry Gus Gus, I guess we're, we're all in the same boat here. Oh man, it feels so good to just get out of the sun uh, a little bit. Everywhere here, there are uh, deer tracks. Looks like they're just a couple weeks old tops. So the deer probably came down here and were drinking uh, when there was water left. There is no water at the surface, but maybe what I'm noticing is, uh, look at this. See uh, how I just kneeled down and there's water, like my knee uh, is wet. Uh, so my guess, is that there is uh, water, or 100% there's water below the surface. Ah, why not just dig a little tiny bit? We're gonna go to the lowest spot that I can see here. Oh man, it's getting really rocky. It is moist for sure, but there's uh, no standing water. So let's go ahead and continue up the mountain a little bit and see if we can find any water up higher. So if we can't find any water up here on the mountain, we're in trouble and then we gotta move on. Look at this right here. This is a, uh, an old pine tree that uh, succumbed to a forest fire that came through this mountain years ago. It burnt down a bunch of trees you can still see the trunk is slightly black and that must have killed it. And then a storm knocked it over. Rest easy, old friend. Look at uh, this plant. I think this might be an edible plant or it might have a root that is uh, large and edible. 
It's called a uh, nine leaf uh, biscuit root plant. We're gonna confirm that by digging down and seeing if it has a large meaty root. It's still a very young plant, so it might not. Ah, oh, look at that, it does have a bit of a bulb. We're gonna see if we can find a larger one just to confirm uh, what it is. Uh, it's a little hard to tell when it's not mature like that, but the flower pattern seems to make sense. Obviously guys, if you are out foraging, uh, wild mushrooms or plants, always uh, be super safe about it. Make sure you guys go through some books on foraging and do lots of research before you eat anything in the wild. Don't just eat something based off of uh, something you see in a video. But uh, we're just gonna take a look here at what's inside this root. Oh man, that hawk is so not happy with us being right here. Don't worry, buddy, we want nothing to do with your nest. It smells like fennel, is that? I'm not sure, it smells super, super aromatic. It's a little bit yellow, but we're not gonna bite into it until we find a larger one that we can properly identify. All right, let's keep going. Man, just look at it up here. It is a beautiful alpine meadow. But, whoa, I almost slipped because there's, there's water right here. We found running water. Look at this. It's because we are in a bowl here from the mountain and all that runoff from the mountain is collecting here and it's running out this way. And at the, the bottom, you can see right here next to, oh man, look at that. It's next to a deer bone, it looks like. Oh man, we're gonna drink from this right here. How exciting. There's actually one spot that's somewhat deep. This is beautiful right there. Alright, in here uh, we've just got a little pot, we'll need that for the water collection. Uh, the water filter that we're going to use is a, uh, a life straw. I had a really bad experience with uh, a life straw several years ago in the mountains and I just, I couldn't get any good water flow through. It was very hard, if not impossible, to actually drink through it. So I don't know if that one was defective. We're out here and I'm just going to test this guy out again and just give it another shot and see if it works. Have a water filter with you at all times because you never know when you might need one and uh, having access to clean, drinkable water is the foundation of all life. You can survive a long time without food, but only a few days uh, without water. And in heat like this, we might not functionally last more than uh, 24 hours without water. Oh, I feel so good. So I'm just gonna drink as much as I can right here, and then I'm gonna fill up this bottle so that we can carry more water with us. Oh man, that's crazy. You can see tons of little creatures living in this tiny little mountain creek. So even though the water looks completely clear and drinkable, it's always a good idea to filter or boil your water and dis or disinfect uh, before uh, you drink it. Man, do you guys see this shiny little, this little thing right there, that shiny, is that gold? Oh, where'd it go? My goodness, where did it go? Was that a piece of gold? Is this it? There it is, there it is. It's shiny like gold, but I think it's just fool's gold. It's not the real deal. You can go right back in there, buddy. This is probably the last water that we'll find until we get to the mountain lake. We're just skimming off the clean water from the surface. Take your time. Make sure the water you get is nice and clear. Now I'd say this water is uh, pretty clear. Not 100%, it's got a little bit of color to it, but this is definitely some pretty clean water. Feels amazing to have. We can't just drink it like this. We'll have to pour it into that pot there and then drink it through the filter. Oh, man. All right, let's get out of here. We got plenty of water for a while until we get to the next water source, but we need to start finding some food. 
these bushes right here have, uh, they flowered and they will have edible berries on them. I wanna say it's a currant uh, bush, but I'm not seeing the berries yet. That won't be until later. So my plan for future survival missions up here on the mountain is to take note right now of a lot of the plants that will become food sources later in the season, like those berry bushes. Oh, there are some dandelions. There you go, it's the first food that we foraged is just some dandelion blossoms, so we'll keep our eye open for some more of those. Most of them have already gone. <laughs> Look at that. But here, these flowers. It's something, I'll take some of those young fresh leaves. We got a few little blossoms. It'll boil down to a nice little spinach, highly nutritious, but we're gonna have to find something a little bit more substantial than that. Here is a whole bunch of what I believe could be biscuit root. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dig out a big one here. Now I'm digging with my knife. I'm using the backside here. We don't wanna dull our blade digging in the dirt. Ah, oh, man, you guys, super, super tempting to try these roots. But this is my first time foraging this plant and they're not I mean, they do look like bulbous tap roots. Maybe it's just a little young. Let me know in the comments if you guys have experience with this plant here. Remember, we got to play it really safe uh, when we're out here doing this kind of stuff. Eating the wrong uh, food could be worse than eating no food at all. Remember, we could survive a while without food, but uh, poisoning ourselves, man, that would not be any fun. Look at this. This here is a very old uh, antler, a shed antler from a deer. What happens is uh, every year the male deer, we know them because they have uh, the antlers, they actually lose them every year uh, in the winter. These guys fall off of their heads <laughs> and then the male deer look exactly like a female again. This is the second one that I've ever found. That's really cool. You can actually tell by the cracks and stuff that uh, this guy is pretty old. It's very weathered been out in the sun, so my guess is it's several years uh, since this one here got shed off by a deer. Bonus find right there. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we're gonna try and go uh, further down the mountain. This is kind of a steep part, so I might uh, throw you guys on the chesty uh, to play it safe. Oh man, look at these pretty flowers right here. Wow, look at that, just these mountain flowers growing on the side of the rock. Look at that, they're growing straight up there. And check this bush out. Absolutely amazing, just growing right out from the cracks of the rock. That just shows the resilience of plants to survive in these harsh environments. Oh man. There's actually a deer trail right here that uh, we might be able to use to get down. All right, let's go, nice and easy. All right. Man, if you do a lot of climbing, there's one thing you'll learn and that's that going down is always harder than going up. There we go. All right. Oh man, that's where we just came down. Wow, probably should have worn a helmet for that one. Did not expect uh, to run into something that steep, but that was honestly a mistake on my part. Uh, I'm still exploring this whole mountain here. This is just the mountain right behind uh, the farm, and that's why it's the mountain farm. Whew, man, I love it though. Absolutely love it. That hawk is still on our tail. We are easily a mile away from its nest, but that just shows how big of a territory uh, they control and are protective over. 
just amazing. Oh my goodness! Look at this! Oh! We hit the jackpot, baby! This is wild asparagus! Oh, it's giant! Look at the size of this asparagus! It's probably... no. Oh, I'm six feet tall and it's like five and a half, almost six foot tall. This guy right here is a younger shoot. You can still see uh, what the asparagus looks like. This is more what it would look like when you're in the store. Uh, they'd probably be cut off when they're about that tall. I don't see any really young uh, shoots. Look at this, this is old. <sighs> These are old asparagus shoots from last year. So this stuff must be growing here in the same spot every year. Asparagus is uh, perfectly good to eat raw. Mm. Oh, oh. Mm. Shake off all the bugs. Whew, man. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so sweet. Mm. Food at last. Mm. When asparagus gets larger like this, the reason you don't see it like that at the store is they pick it when it's still a lot younger and it's gonna be a lot more tender, a lot juicier. When it grows larger, it gets a little stringier, but it's still super sweet. And the ends here, those little guys, mm, they're perfect, just like in the store. That's as low as we'll eat it. The stem's a little, a little woody. <laughs> yes. Man, this is worth uh, filling up on, guys. Oh, there you go, snapped right off. That is a beautiful, beautiful asparagus right there. I'm gonna fit that in there. And then what we'll do is we'll take uh, like the tips of all of these guys here. Look at that, awesome. There's another plant right there. It kind of stands out actually because it's a very tall, tall plant. Oh, look at this. Yes, that's a perfect one. Two really nice ones. Oh, here we go. So you guys can see the baby asparagus. This is exactly what you would get if you're buying asparagus from the store. Uh, this is just a little guy, but nice and tender, fresh. Oh, look at this. Absolutely perfect mountain asparagus growing right at the base of the mountain by the farm. This is amazing. Look at that. Perfect. Some more right here. This one probably would be good, but it's the only stalk I'm seeing right here and I want it to be able to seed and don't want to just completely uh, kill it all off. So we'll leave that one there for, for next year. Oh, look at that, an old can. <laughs> we can pack that baby out that don't belong out here. Oh, perfect. That is a lot of asparagus right there. We can add our dandelion. Life straws are the weirdest thing. Sometimes it feels like I can't drink water through them at all. And other times it's like, like it's not even filtering it at all. It's like a free flow. Man, several episodes ago, I found a uh, dead deer and uh, here's still some fur left over. I put a trail camera out to film uh, the process of what comes in uh, to eat that deer, I showed a little bit in some past videos. I'll probably roll in a little bit of footage uh, right now because a lot of you guys were asking to see uh, the whole video. But something that's fascinating is right here is where the deer died and see how the grass is greener? I mean, it really is just beautiful because it shows that uh, no energy is lost. An animal died, which is sad of course, but it is letting the plants grow greener and that will provide food for other animals. It's amazing the amount of animals that I saw come in uh, to feed on that deer. There were coyotes, multiple of them that came in and they didn't actually like warm up to the deer until maybe about a week in. They would not touch it. They came over and sniffed it a few times and then they tried to tug it off.
and most impressively, a bunch of bald eagles came in to feed on him. By then, the deer had kind of gotten dragged uh, away from the camera, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a whole lot of shots. Even though they don't all have that classic white neck, all that means is those are younger uh, bald eagles. All the bird experts, though, let me know in the comments if you guys think that those were bald eagles or if maybe there was a golden eagle or something like that mixed in. And you guys see there's a patch of aspen trees right up there in front of us that might have some mushrooms uh, in them. You can see these are very young uh, trees and they're kind of the remnants of uh, a forest fire that came through, burnt down a lot of the old growth. And then this is often what comes and shoots out, but those are often really popular areas for the, the mushrooms to grow. Whew. All right, let's do this. Oh. oh wow, all these bushes here are huckleberry bushes. Later in the year, they'll have delicious wild blueberries growing on them. That's amazing. Sometimes you gotta get really low to the ground in order to spot mushrooms. Look underneath all of the bushes. I have to take off the backpack. I keep getting stuck in everything, especially with the fishing poles. Now the conditions should be absolutely perfect for mushrooms because we had a really hot spring and then all of a sudden it rained for a week and now it's hot again and mushrooms absolutely love that kind of a, uh, a shift in weather. So if there's any growing, now is going to be the time. Oh, yes. Yes, right there. Oh my goodness. Here, he's buried under logs. I'll send you in on the GoPro. Look at that right there. Yes, we found a wild morel, a morel mushroom. Oh, we just got to get him out of there. Here we go. We're just kind of, kind of pinch him off at the root. Don't want to pull the whole thing. There we go. Uh, look at that! Yes! Morels are some of the best eating mushrooms in the world. And finding them can be a little tricky sometimes. If you're good at them and know where to look, oftentimes after a wildfire, areas are absolutely loaded uh, with morels. All right, where there's one, there's usually more. So we're just gonna search this whole area right here. And it really helps to just get down close to the ground and just get a different perspective. You kind of want to have the perspective of the mushroom. That's right. Get down on mushroom level. Oh, look at this. These guys. Not sure what those are. We're just going to leave those little guys right there. Or if we don't know what it is, we don't want to pick it. Same here. Something else. Man, that can't be just one lonely morel. Where are his buddies? We need to find his friends. They could be here somewhere. What we'll probably do uh, is keep looking for mushrooms in uh, future episodes. I'm going to go out, uh, obviously, on some longer backpacking trips. I've read the comments, and it looks like you guys want to see more uh, mushroom foraging. Uh, plus, I love mushroom foraging. I've been mushroom foraging since before I was fishing. Over in Germany, it's really hard to legally fish. <laughs> so we did a lot of mushroom foraging as kids over there. Uh, it's, kind of, it's just something that I grew up with. All right. One morel, not bad, not bad. That's a success on the mushroom front. That is just amazing. Sometimes it's about proof of concept, just simply succeeding, not maxing out, but uh, achieving something, learning something new, you know, finding a new species of something. All right, let's get out of this thick aspen grove and get to the lake. We're getting really close, guys. We're getting really close. And then hopefully, we still have enough light to catch some fish. We are starting to get into the forested parts of the mountain. And uh, when I said earlier that a wildfire came through here, just look at this. This is what a forest looks like after a fire comes through. Wow, it 
just look at these trees. The bark is completely, it's turned to charcoal. Oh, sorry, buddy. Just look at these majestic old pine trees. Man, all of this here has started coming back in full bloom and it's green and getting beautiful again. To me, one of the most beautiful forests is an old burnt out forest that's coming back to life. All right, we're getting really close to the lake, but as you can see, the sun has pretty much already set. She's behind the mountain there. So hopefully we still have a little bit of daylight to try our luck at some fish. Guess we're getting really close. I can hear running water. It's probably a small stream coming out of this lake. Oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gotten so late in the day though. Man, the sun has set. We are deep in the forest now. Deep, deep in the forest. You can see that uh, the fire did come through here as well, but the forest survived. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's beautiful, but the lake is, it is way down there. Look at the color of the water. It's like a nasty, murky. Find out if there isn't still uh, something that wants to bite. There is some serious runoff coming down that mountain there. You can actually see where it's, the silt is coming out. There's like a silty bank. Oh, there's something down in the water. What is that? Oh my goodness, let me, oh! Oh, it's a beaver, a giant mountain beaver. Oh, it was huge. I thought it was a deer. I thought it was a big deer swimming across the lake. Man, he looks like a big, happy mountain beaver. And I just saw uh, what looks like it was a fish surfacing. Don't worry, beaver, we're coming. We're coming, but we won't eat you. I'm only after some fish. Over there, look at that. You can see it's kind of a sunken foresty area, full of snags. We don't want to go there. Oh, there's there's the beaver. There's the beaver, the mountain beaver. <laughs> Let's see if we can sneak up on the beaver. Oh, he went down, he went down. Oh, it's an angry chipmunk, get out of here. Let's go, get away from the chipmunk. It's really steep though, really don't want to fall into that water. Oh, wow. This is a perfect spot. We could fish from this rock right here. Oh my goodness, there's a big spider right there. I'm stuck in it. Oh, oh man, I almost knocked him out of the, the oh, where did he go? What kind of spider was that? I didn't see it. Oh, and the beaver's splashing at us. Ugh. Man, I gotta say this water looks really, really nasty. Uh, that's one thing that we're spoiled with up here in the Northwest is most of the lakes and the uh, creeks that I run into are crystal clear. I still filter the water, but man, I, I don't know if I wanna drink this even with the, the, the life straw because I just don't trust the life straw 100%. Either I can barely get any water flow at all and it feels like it's really filtering it and then all of a sudden it feels like it's a free flow. Let me know, is that normal for a life straw? Not saying that that's not how it's supposed to work. A stagnant lake with beavers swimming in it. Does that mean you could get beaver fever? Okay, well we have half a bottle of uh, somewhat cleaner water left. All right, so in the tackle box, really all I have is a little bit of uh, some four pound fluoro leader, a little bit of split shot, some various bobbers, some swivels, uh, a little compartment with some flies that we could fish. But what we're pulling out right now is a bullet lure. That's how we're gonna start this out. Now I don't have any worms or any bait with me. 
Uh, so if we want to catch anything with like a bobber or something, we'd have to find it ourselves as part of the challenge. A little chipmunk yelling at us. Oh, something just scared me right there. I, with the camera wasn't rolling, but you guys see the ripples. Some black little creature jumped into the water. It might have been a baby beaver or a muskrat. Man, this place is a little spooky, guys. It's a spooky haunted mountain lake. Right. Fairly stable right here. All right, first cast with the bolt lure. Get that baby way out there. Oh, man, there's like maybe half a foot of visibility. It is murky, murky water. Oh, that, that was a fish. That must have been a fish. I don't know what that was, but it was not a beaver. Definitely not a beaver. Oh, come on, let's cast right on top of him. All right, there we go, there we go. We got some branches in the way. We'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. Come on, baby. Come on. What's that? That looked like a decent fish too. Man, there's so many mosquitoes in my face. Oh. There, 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 there. There's one hunting right there at the surface. Let's try and get right on top of him. A little next to him. Oh, there he is, there he is! Oh, come on, baby, come on. He's kind of swimming that way, so we're going to cast where he's going. Right there. Come on, baby. I'm go nice and slow. Oh, there he is, there he is. Guys, I am hyper-focused right now. I'd love to get a trout. Uh, I can't even talk right now. I would love to get a trout for dinner uh, with that uh, asparagus and the mushroom that we foraged, that would be that would be it. Mushroom, meat, and plant. Oh man, the trifecta. I don't know what it is about this lake, but it's kind of a tense place. Knowing that there's a hungry trout hunting for food right in front of us, but it's so murky that we can't see what's beneath the surface. It's a little bit eerie, but I like it.
Man, it's nice. It went from being really hot today to a little cool. So this feels kind of nice. So what we're just gonna do is take a bunch of this asparagus here and cram it into this pot. Good old fashioned steamed asparagus in a pot. <laughs> Way better, if I were at home, I would, what I would do right now is I would take an oven pan and roll these guys in olive oil, sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper on them. Ooh, speaking of salt, we might have not caught any fish, but that doesn't mean we can't use a little sprinkle of some Danish sea salt. <laughs> Here you go. Oh yeah, we've sweat a lot today, so it won't hurt to get a little bit of salt into our body. Man, and this little morel, I'd way rather fry them with some butter and a juicy trout, but we'll just kind of break them up. They're very brittle little mushrooms. Oh no, I lost some. Oh, ah, oh, that's all right. We'll just kind of break them up into the asparagus for some flavor. Look at that. Oh, it smells absolutely delicious. I uh, did just climb back up from the lake. I wanted to at least get out of that hole uh, before it got completely dark. What we gotta do is come back out here again in one of the next episodes. Let me know in the comments if you want me to come back here. There's a whole nother lake that we could also go to and I did take a quick peek at it and it looked a lot more clear, but there definitely was, I think a trout, a hungry one in there. So that's probably what I'll do is come back out here, maybe pitch a tent and we could camp out here together and do a forage, catch, cook and camp. Let me know if you wanna see that in the comments and of course subscribe uh, if you haven't already, that way you guys don't miss it. Take a peek here, I don't wanna overcook anything. Oh, look at that color, vibrant neon green. It looks absolutely beautiful. You know, what I'm actually just gonna do is pour the rest of the water in there too and we'll get like an asparagus tea. Let that get up to a boil again real quick. I don't wanna to lose too much water now through evaporation. Oh yeah, it's definitely boiling in there. MSR Pocket Rocket, it's one hell of a stove. I know that there's other good ones out there. It's just, I've had a fantastic experience with those. All the gear that I use uh, for my backpacking and mountain videos, uh, I've always got in the video description below if you guys are curious. It is absolutely beautiful in the woods at night, in the dark. Have you guys ever been out in the middle of the woods by yourself in the dark? Let me know in the comments. Ever seen anything weird happen out here? Some of you guys even wanted me to tell about some scary stories and encounters I've had out in the mountains while solo backpacking. So I might do that when we go camping together. We gotta camp though and have like a campfire for those stories. So let me know in the comments if you, <laughs> if you want that and smash that like button. And uh, if we get enough likes, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll do scary story time at camp. <laughs> All right. Oh man. Let's just try this. Oh, it's so sweet, so sweet. And just steaming it like that is, uh, it's still got a lot of bite to it. It's not like too soft or anything, but steaming it just broke it down a little bit, making it super juicy. It's like an asparagus noodle. Had there been a bear on the other end eating it, we could have kissed in the middle. <laughs> mm. That morel definitely is giving this asparagus a nice earthy flavor. A little bit of protein in that morel too. All right, you guys, I gotta get out of here. I would say overall, the survival challenge was a success. We need to catch fish next time that would have provided us with some very healthy fats and high amounts of protein. We found a clean water source up on the mountain. This water here didn't trust it. We would have had to have pre-boiled it to kill any viruses in the water and then drank it through the filter to filter out any mucky sediment because that water was really nasty looking. <laughs> but uh, overall, I mean, we found a mushroom, we found vegetables. I think we did really good on the plants. But uh, anyways, that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the comment section. Leave a like on the video, it helps a ton. And uh, I love you guys. Subscribe if you're brand new and we'll see you all very soon for the next fishing adventure. Until then, you all know it, fish on, baby.